Hi, I thought I'd just share a little modelling tip uh, which I found while modelling this mechanical arm uh, and it was to do with creating these, these weld joints around uh, these various parts to uh, give that little bit of uh, realism to the, uh, to the model uh, and I found what I thought was a really quick way of doing this um, I'm sure there are other ways of, uh, of doing it but this, is, uh, this was my method so let's say we want to create a weld joint around these two parts here and these are separate objects at the moment um, so uh, and with them being sub-Ds what I want to do is I want to need to freeze them first so that I can boolean uh, one shape from the other uh, which I've already done uh, which gives you this uh, this shape here uh, and I've gone and deleted a whole bunch of uh, polygons uh, that I didn't need it. so I just ended up with this profile where the two objects meet you know the exact intersection point as you can see and once I had that I just went around and selected all the points in order uh, to create a path profile now if you look at this in Y frame view you'll see that it's a really messy path um, so you might want to go and clean up some of the points I had to go in and uh, just kind of um, weld average um, you know some of the points that which were really kind of close together um, the rail extrude uh, tool kind of gets a bit funny when you've got points that are a bit you know, almost on top of each other really um, so d try it out first uh, and if you have any problems just go and look at the points in, in that particular area uh, but the density of this doesn't actually really matter uh, until um, uh, because we got, when we rail extrude this we can control how, how dense the mesh is so there's our path um, as you can see so the next one is to uh, obviously create a weld profile and we have just a disk basically now the, the kind of trick for this is to is to make sure that the the number of sides uh, is, is set to a level that when you rail extrude this the the quad quads that you know form the profile of them um, or, the, or the actual shape uh, are kind of square uh, and we'll see why that's important in a minute so what I first need to do though is to put the path in the background and obviously you can see it's not lined up so you can do either do that by eye or if you want to save some time like I usually do uh, you can use a, a plugin called First Contact and now this is by uh, Pictrix who's done loads of useful plugins for uh, Lightwave uh, this is the LScript version of it there is a, a plugin version of it but it's only 32-bit so I'm on 64-bit windows here so I have to use the LScript version which is fine works perfectly fine uh, so you, leave it on connect mode, click OK you can see it's obviously moved it uh, onto the end of the path and you can change the angle and uh, the offset uh, of where that is on the end of the path but we want to leave it all on zero and if I just zoom in on that you can see that it's pretty much aligned to that path and if I just uh, flip that round because we want it to go into the, the direction that the path is going to be going and that's it so now we just want to rail extrude this so leaving the um, path in the background and the profile in the foreground control R to bring up rail extrude which is on the multiply tab I think and you want this number fairly high I've just put an arbitrary number in of 300 here um, but you want it on um, uniform lengths is the important setting to have and obviously you want it to be orientated to the curve so if I click OK what you end up with, if I go into full 3D view, you can see that the the quads that make up this uh, shape are you know pretty pretty square, um, and that's like I say that's quite important. So if I just get these two end pieces now and just run the bridge tool to just merge them together. Now you, obviously when this path was created, it, it the rail extrude does kind of twist the, the um, uh, the profile it doesn't keep it sort of perpendicular to any particular axes really so you'll get this little bit of twist here but for what we're doing it doesn't actually really matter uh, but just gives us a fully sub D shape which is important and if I just uh, set this surface of this to uh, the body color so now if I put the arm in the background you can see that we end up with this uh, extremely neat <laughs> weld take, a, take, take some uh, professional welder uh, a lifetime to get that good but um, 
so yeah, so you can see what, what it's done. It's put this perfectly in line with uh, those two objects. But in order to get it more kind of world-like, um, what I did was I ran the Jitter plugin, which is under um, the Modify tab, and Jitter. Left it on Gaussian and just put the level down to uh, half a millimeter, and it just disturbs the the points enough to kind of give it a more bumpy, uh, globular kind of look. And you can play around with that and increase it or whatever you need to get the right look. So now, if I put the arm in the background, you can see we end up with this, uh, you know, kind of weld type shape. And if I just got this shaded view, you can see it's looking a bit more realistic now. Um, so it's a really quick way of just doing a, a, that type of weld joint. Uh, and if you, uh, let's say you've you created this now and you think, well, actually, I, I need to really fatten up that weld. It doesn't look um, doesn't look big enough. Then Rather than you know changing your profile and really rail extruding everything, you can just go to the um, modify tab and under translate more, point normal move, and you can increase the size of your weld from something you know much thinner to something much fatter um, to give a, a more chunky looking weld if you if you need it really. So it, and it works on the point normal, so it's, everything stays completely in, in, in the right place. It just grows it out from itself or shrinks it in. So that's you know a really quick way of, of doing welds, I think. Um, just a point about the profiles, though. If I just create a uh, new disk, and instead of having eight segments, if I say put it to 24 or something something high uh, like that to get a you know a perfect uh, or more perfect sort of a sphere. That sphere, circle even. Um, you can see why this isn't uh, particularly uh, a good way of doing it. So if I just again line that up with the end of the curve and just flip the direction, if I rail extrude with the same settings, you can see what we end up with. If I go to um, wireframe mode. You can see we end up with these segments now that where they're, where they're much longer in the direction of the path than they are going sort of uh, 90 degrees to it. So you end up with more rectangular looking um, uh, quads. If I just bridge them two together again. And the problem with that is if I um, run the Jitter plugin now on that and do the same. You can see that what we end up with is, is a much more kind of wavy looking, which, which you know you might want actually, uh, but it's it's much more um, wave-like as opposed to kind of globular really. So if I go to uh, the previous one, you can see that one's a bit more, you know, kind of globby looking, and then that one's a bit more you know, sort of uh, wave-like. Um, so you can change the look of how that weld uh, appears by just changing the um, the the, the, the segments from either being square or long or whatever, so you can experiment with that basically. Um, and obviously this is a sub D shape and it's there's quite a lot of um, segments in it so it's quite it's quite high poly really. Um, so you again you might want to uh, tweak that and you you can um, you know maybe tweak your curve and things like that to get it to get it so that you, you don't need as many points but um but yeah effectively that's that's the technique really pretty pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, and you can see it, what it looks like when it's rendered. Looks looks fairly realistic, I think. So yeah, that was it. Really quick little modelling tip. Um, hope you find that useful. Cheers.